Well, I got a real treat for you today. I'm going to be installing the heater kit um, for my Can-Am uh, for the cab build. Still got to get the doors on it. But uh, this heater kit apparently is a two-day job for the dealership. And uh, they kind of shook their head and didn't really want to help me out. Um, I could um, have them install it, but it's two grand. It's, it's two days labor for the dealership. So it'll probably be a two or three day um, install for me, but good thing it's gonna be warm finally and dry. And then um, I have the four wheeler for backup so I can actually train dogs. So not really looking forward to this install, but I did a search on YouTube and nobody has done this. So, um, well, I'm sure people have installed, but nobody has produced a video. So this will be number one, first video on YouTube. That'll be pretty cool. So I'm gonna film with the GoPros today. I don't wanna take time to set up my good camera because that's gonna take twice as long to uh, videotape and three times as long to um, edit the video and put everything together and upload. So um, we'll do GoPros, try to save a little bit of time on the install process. Um, I also have to live a life and I have errands to run today and tomorrow. So uh, it's gonna be little by little, but we'll get her done. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing they want you to do is take the toolbox out. I took that out and take the battery cover off. Thanks for help, Toybo. Thinks there's mice in here. And then we need to pull uh, this cover here too. So I'm assuming this has got to come out and that. So let's get started. Okay, let's pop these out. <laughs> Kidding. Mice have taken over this thing. What the hell? Well, it comes with aluminum tubes, but it looks like the tubes are already in here. I am not sure why. So, we don't even have to do that step. But we did have to remove this for the heater install, because i got to splice some hoses up here. But I'm going to vacuum this out, this mess. Mice have taken this over. Definitely going to have to set out some traps now, so... All right, I'm gonna vacuum this out and then we'll resume. All right, I got it all vacuumed out. I just took a little bit of soapy water and washed some of this. And on to the next step. Okay, before we start um, cutting hoses and stuff like that, I'm gonna start pulling this lower dash off. They don't give you specific instructions, but it looks like a bunch of uh, Torx bolts that are holding it on. So I'm going to find all those. Start pulling that apart. Okay, so we got the whole lower dash assembly taken apart. It's just a handful of um, Torx screws. I use a T30 
and a T20. There's also that 12 volt uh, connector right there. So took a picture of that to make sure I know what side goes on what when I reassemble it. So on to the next phase. Okay, they want you to remove the front fender up here and this panel on both sides. I'm assuming it's so that we can get the vents in there. So take these guys out, this one and this one. All right, we got the fenders removed. Looks kind of odd. This I kept on, but I removed two bolts up here. And then yet we have to do the deflector for the radiator that goes down there. Looks kind of odd, everything torn apart here. Oh, look at that. It goes down in there. Stuff something down in there. Okay, both sides are off. Now we gotta cut the holes for the vents. You gotta cut this one. Assuming that does the doors. This one up here for the windshield. This one here, I'm just gonna use a sharp razor. And that one there. Let's cut those holes. All right, I took a break, ran to town, and fed the dogs. So now we're going to put on this adapter, this left-hand adapter here. And then there's the vent there, the left-hand vent. And it attaches to this hose right here. So, and this hose right there. So I'm going to zip tie that and install it. Okay, I got one installed. That was pretty easy. The only problem is getting the hose over there, but it's gonna come out there. So now I'll do this top vent here. There's actually two screws that can go up into here, but it doesn't say um, exactly uh, which screws. Those would be tough to get in. Oh well, I'll come back to it if there's two little extra screws, but I didn't see any in the kit. There's none in the instructions either. All right, got that vent in. Just the T15, they don't even tell you on the instructions that you should put these little screws in to hold it. That's the only way you can hold it. I had a hard time um, getting it in there. I actually had to assemble the uh, vent on the outside with the tube because the tube has to feed through a certain way. And it goes way back there. Um, and the wiring harnesses and stuff are in the way, so you gotta kinda uh, maneuver them and finagle them in there. But we got it. Now to do the right side vents. All right, the right side's in. This side was a lot easier because you got way more room under here. You can see, <gasps> excuse me. A lot of room. Stick your arm in there. That's why we had to pull that fender off so I could get my arm in there. So, right side's done. Now we need to do air intake, which goes up here. So that you're pulling in fresh air from the outside. It fits in there just like that with a plastic rivet. Super easy. We're gonna figure out where this hose gonna go apparently we need to cut a hole in the uh, the bulkhead here sorry about this so we got to cut this thing somehow and it's gonna be a hole here somewhere oh there it is yeah so we have to cut 
it's already pre-marked. So cut this out right there. I'm gonna do that next. Okay, I got that done. I butchered it a little bit. I thought I could do it with tin snips, but I ended up just working better with a razor blade knife. So that'll make room for the additional hoses that we need to put up in there. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, hook up the power and then um, hook up the supports for the heater unit. All right, power's hooked up. Goes to this little guy right there. And that's it. Pretty easy. Well, I'll make sure you disconnect the battery first. <laughs> well, good morning. Day two of the install. Got a little hung up last night. Um, Can-Am has a reputation of providing terrible instructions. Um, even if they're updated, they're just absolutely horrible. So, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll show you on, on the instructions, but they wanted you to use a rivet tool to put in the riv nuts, which is impossible. You, you can't do that. You need a riv nut tool, which I don't have. So you have to make your own riv nut tool with a bolt and a nut and a washer. Um, so I was able to get the supports in. And uh, a little too warm to run dogs today, so I wanted a fresh brain to finish this project. My brain works breast, bleh, breast. <laughs> Guess what's on my mind? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, works best in the morning. Um, that's when I'm the most creative, when, I'm, when I get the most productivity, um, business type stuff work done. In the afternoon, I can do my labor because I don't have to think so much. So wanted a fresh brain to finish this project. I think all I got to do is um, uh, hook up the vents, uh, mount, the, uh, mount the unit itself, hook up the power, and um, cut some hoses. So I picked up a neat little hose cutting tool at Fleet Farm yesterday. It's done by Milwaukee. I'm going to try that out, and um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so this is where I left off last night. Uh, the rib nuts go down in here for this bottom support. Um, that's fairly sturdy. That's not going to go anywhere. I tightened those down pretty tight. And the upper support is in on this side, the right side. And the upper support is in on that left side there. So what I can do is put the fenders back on. So this can all be reassembled here. I think I'll do that next. This one, I'm gonna push up that hose a little bit more so there's no bend in it down below. But I'm gonna put the fenders back on and then we go to the next step. All right, we've got the fenders back on. The next thing I'm gonna do here is uh, put this little deflector in. It requires drilling some holes, but I gotta cut out. Um, cut this out right here, this piece. And then two holes get drilled, probably one right here and one right here and it's just a twist lock to slide in that plate um, that goes in front of the radiator to preserve heat uh, during the winter. So some of you older folks remember that we used to put cardboard on our radiators in the winter to save heat. That's the same thing this does so when you're going down the road I've experienced it last winter going down the road um, my water temp uh, would be normal and then go down the road at 20 miles an hour and the water temp drops way down so this will keep the motor nice and warm and the cab nice and warm sweet well, we got that installed just two twist locks 
you have to cut a little bit of the plastic out from the front body there but you can see that it'll easily come in and out if you get too hot blocks the radiator right there and down here but it does allow a little bit of air to come through All right, onward. So the next step was to prep the heat unit itself. So you pull this cover off. It's got the air filter on it. And you attach this hose here. Got everything dry fitted. Um, use a little bit of soap for lubrication. Just a tiny bit. I don't want soap in the antifreeze system. And over here, this hose. I hate these clamps. I wish they, I mean, look at the factory. They put on real hose clamps here. Um, I strongly dislike these clamps. So, I don't know which one is the return and which one is the heat, but I guess we'll figure that out once we connect here. There's a valve here, check valve, goes back here, and here's power. So we got that, and I think we're about ready to uh, start cutting hoses. Okie dokie, this process took me quite a while, but I have the, uh, the heater unit just kind of dry mounted in here. I had to loosen up this top right hand mount um, just so I could get it up there. I got all the hoses connected. Um, you gotta splice this one in half, cut out about an inch, put in this T, put on this hose here to that T. Then down here is where I had the majority of the problem. I had already put the uh, junction on there. It's like a one inch to an inch and a half uh, junction. And so I had to cut the, the band and I had a hose clamp, a banded hose clamp, but now I got a regular hose clamp on there because I had one, luckily. And then this one sits down um, in the bottom here. This was a pain in the butt. Um, you gotta disconnect. The thermostat is right there. You gotta disconnect that one, put a new hose on there. And then this is a new hose too. They run to this bottom aluminum piece. And in the back, there's a T junction right here. You have to put that in. This hose goes down to the thermostat. And this is the new hose that runs on that aluminum um, pipe that goes to the front of the vehicle. My uh, reservoir has drained out. They want you to cut, <laughs> it makes no sense, but they want you to cut this reservoir vent hose back here. I'm not sure why. There's nothing, no reason to cut it. The instructions of Canem are absolutely horrible. But anyways, we got uh, you know, maybe uh, two quarts of antifreeze, maybe half a gallon. So not too bad, but I am ready to fill and run the vehicle and um, test for leaks. So, I'm going to fill and then start her up. All right, the finish line is in sight. Doesn't appear to be any leaks. Must have done a good job uh, clamping hoses, eh? It's there. Sucking down a lot of antifreeze though supposed to fill up the system. I put almost a gallon in there. 50-50 decks. Make sure you use that good orange stuff. Can-Am gets mad. The sucker cranks out some good heat. It's warm. That's for sure. So I'll let the beast warm up for a little bit longer and bleed the air out of the system. And 
then um, I'm gonna put the dash back together. There's a piece that goes back here. I'm gonna move this out a little bit. Um, and then hook up this hose to <laughs> one thing they don't give you in this kit, which is bad on Can Am's part, is is this dash mount. It's it's entirely different than the original. There's another piece on that side too that needs to go in. So I'm gonna have to order that so I can hook up my 12 volt for the passenger side. In the butt, they should give that to you. Should come automatic, but it doesn't. So, I'm going to button up this dash and then we'll take her for a test ride. Okay, everything's put back together. Put up this little boxy thinger. There's a gap here sure if that's gonna stay or I'll fill that in the body part there's the gap here heater unit I found that if you close these vents it pushes up more air towards the top of the vehicle on the windshield and the doors there's two vents here probably for your feet I'll let the light adjust it's one on this side and one on the other side for your legs but let's take it for a road test and see if everything's good. Ooh, that floor is the that's gonna freeze on the floor. Sleepery. Stopped at the end of the road. Everything seems to be fine. Let's do a quick check around. I'm gonna look underneath and see if I can see any water dripping anywhere. It's taken a full gallon of 50/50 in a freeze, so you have to add some and let the. Uh, let the pressure adjust and bleed bleed out the air. Level's good right now. Let's crank the heat and see if we got heat. Um, heat but it's not super hot I took the uh, radiator plate out so it's not running as usually as hot as it does put that radiator plate back in probably when it's dips below freezing but I'm super excited because this windshield fogs up uh, early mornings when we have dew and heavy humidity and do you like my crack? I got a nice big crack. It was only about this long yesterday, and now it's gone all the way over the center. <laughs> There's no chip in the windshield at all. So I don't know how that crack happened, but I got full glass on this thing, so on the insurance. Call the insurance company, file a claim, and 
hopefully get a new windshield put on. I'll just end up doing it myself. So, let's take her back home and then I'll show you the tools that I used. We're gonna go over all the tools used. Uh, some liquid courage there, uh, 3 8 drive ratchet with the 13 mil deep socket, quarter inch drive with the 10 mil, regular old screwdriver. Love these tools here. This, tool. um, this is what I did use to clamp the hoses, hose clamps. T30 for most of the body parts. Uh, T20 for a couple of the body parts and a T15 for the vents. Uh, torque wrench for the bottom support. Um, rivet nuts or rib nuts. And this cool new tool I got from Milwaukee. Um, it's a hose cutting tool. Cuts up to one inch. Actually needed probably inch and a half, but this did the job and then um, some body uh, rivet pullers this one I use quite a bit and I probably use this tool uh, more than others to cut plastic and then to cut zip ties so that's it day and a half and she's done thanks for watching make sure you subscribe like the video comment if you like and we'll talk to you later